presentation. Uh, my name is Tomotaka Kawahara. I'm a team leader in Liken RQC and CPR. Uh, it's a great pleasure for me to have this opportunity to talk to you about my work uh, on the optimal right core and digital quantum simulation of interacting bosons. Uh, this is a joint work uh, with uh, Tan Van Bu in Liken and uh, Keiji Saito in Kyoto University. Several of our works uh, have been published or uh, uploaded in archive. Uh, today I want to show the, the resolution of the bosonic leaf Robinson band in short range interacting system first. And, uh, and the last uh, five or 10 minutes, I want to show some open problems and current work on the extension to long range interacting systems. Okay, so I first show the basic notion of the leaf Robinson band. The leaf Robinson band uh, roughly characterizes the speed limit of the information propagation. In mathematical level, uh, we first consider the uh, time evolution of the local operator, uh, which is supported on some side i, and then consider the time evolution of this uh, local operator. After the time evolution, uh, this operator spreads to the outside of the side i, and this is, becomes non-local. And, our, uh, and we aim to approximate uh, this uh, local, uh, the time evolution of local operator uh, onto some uh, ball regions uh, with uh, radius r at the centered i, and this is given by this form. Then uh, our problem is, is to estimate the approximation error by the local approximation of the time evolution of the exact uh, uh, I mean the, uh, time evolved operator. The leap Robinson bound uh, mathematically gives the general upper bound on this error. The leap Robinson bound is quite general, uh, I mean, the inequality and uh, applies to very general class of quantum uh, many body systems. The, uh, we only have to assume these two conditions. The first condition is that the interaction is short range. Uh, this condition can be relaxed to exponential decay of interactions. And now uh, I, oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And the, we cons I consider the uh, two body Hamiltonians. This HIJ uh, describes the interaction between the site I and site J, and HI is the local potential for simplicity. And the interaction is short range means this one. I mean, the interaction uh, I mean the, between the long range interaction is equal to zero or exponential decaying. And the second condition is uh, uh, local energy is finitely upper bounded. And uh, this condition is also given by this form. And these two conditions are usually uh, satisfied for very general class of uh, quantum anybody systems, such as a uh, uh, fermionic system or a quantum spin system. And the leaf Robinson bound is described in this form uh, by the uh, operator, uh, sorry, uh, the normal, uh, normal of the commutator inequality, uh, which is given by this form. And by using this uh, commutator inequality, we also obtain the local approximation in this form. So if the, uh, I mean the distance uh, exceeds the BT, the approximation becomes uh, rapidly better. But the problem is uh, happens uh, when one of the condition breaks down. Unfortunately, uh, these two conditions are not necessarily uh, satisfied in practical setups, such as in the case of the cold atom system. And our question is to answer what happens. I mean, the, uh, how to, uh, I mean, the, I mean the ch how to change the, I mean, the shape of the effective light cone uh, of the um, local approximations. In the standard leap Robinson bound, the shape of the effective light cone is given by the linear form. I mean, the uh, approximation becomes better, uh, very good, uh, if uh, the, I mean, the distance is proportional to the time. But uh, this condition, uh, I mean, the uh, change if the conditions uh, breaks down. In the case of the uh, short range interaction, interacting conditions breaks down, we consider the long range interaction. The long range interaction means the uh, uh, polynomial decay of the interaction. Uh, because the interaction uh, is long range and uh, e every I mean, the, uh, particle simultaneously interacts with each other. So we expect that the, uh, I mean, the information propagation is enhanced uh, very much. But, uh, but the, this uh, I mean, the enhancement of the information propagation depends on the decay rate of the polynomial interactions. 
and the shape of the effective light cone depends on this, uh, I mean, the uh, decay exponent of the long range interaction. And this kind of, uh, I mean, the com complete, I mean, the characterization of the shape of the effective light cone has been uh, achieved in the recent studies. And uh, this problem is uh, mostly completed. And the, sec the breakdown of the second condition is uh, given, for example, in the case of interacting bosons. In the case of bosonic systems, uh, all the bosons can concentrate on one side. And in this case, the uh, uh, local energy, uh, I mean, they cannot be, uh, I mean, the finitely upper bounded. And this kind of, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, this kind of bosonic system is ubiquitous in cold atom systems, and this has been known as notoriously difficult questions. And our, uh, our work uh, uh, completely solved this, uh, 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 I mean, the problems in the case of short-range interacting systems. In our work, uh, we consider the Bose-Hubbard type, type Hamiltonian, uh, which is uh, a minimal model to describe the natural, uh, I mean, the setup in cold atoms. And uh, I want to note that the first experiment for the Lee Robinson band is given for the uh, Bose Hubbard Hamiltonian on 1D systems. And in our study, uh, we consider the generalized Bose Hubbard type model, the hopping term plus arbitrary boson boson interaction. This F is an arbitrary function with respect to the boson number operators. For example, if we choose this function F like this form, then this uh, gen uh, generalized both Hubbard type model uh, reduces to the standard both Hubbard models. And in this uh, model, the one site energy is given by this form. So if the uh, capital N bosons concentrate on one site I, for example, then the local energy is proportional to the square of the, uh, square of the N. So in this uh, uh, system, the, uh, the local energy can be at, uh, at most as large as the uh, square of the total number of bosons. So it cannot be uh, uh, finitely upper bound. And our goal is to establish the Lee Robinson band for both have a type Hamiltonian. And in considering the Lee Robinson bound in the interacting boson systems, we have to consider two uh, di different problems separately. Uh, and uh, the first one is the speed of boson transport, and the second one is the standard, uh, I mean, the total information propagation. The first one is uh, uh, the speed of boson transport. Uh, the problem is, for example, we consider initially consider some uh, region X, and uh, bosons, uh, I mean, the flow inside the region X from the outside of the region X. And we want to know how much, how, how many bosons can concentrate on the region X from the outside of the uh, region X uh, by some finite time. And this kind of speed of boson transport is uh, described by the operator inequalities, uh, like this form. This, uh, uh, the problem is to estimate this uh, uh, epsilon hat RST, I mean the error operators from the uh, number operator in the region XR. Uh, this XR is extended region from the, uh, the region X. And the second one is more natural to con consider the, uh, the, I mean, the total information propagation. This characterizes the standard reproducible bound. And the point to uh, identify the speed of boson transport is that uh, this is uh, connected to the boson number distribution of uh, local site. By using this operator inequality in the Heisenberg picture, after the time evolutions, the number of, I mean, the moment function of the uh, boson number, I mean, boson number moment is upper bounded by the boson number <laughs> moment of the extended regions. So by using this uh, uh, operator inequality, we can estimate the probability distribution for boson number uh, after time evolutions. And by using this uh, properties, uh, we want to know the speed of total information propagation uh, for some uh, initial, for some uh, uh, appropriate in initial state. If we choose uh, the initial state arbitrarily, yeah, we can we we know that usually the uh, there are no meaningful upper bound of the Lee Robinson band. So we have to assume some uh, 
uh, some assumptions of the initial states. And after, uh, as I will show afterward, uh, this initial state satisfies the low boson density conditions. And this, from these uh, uh, inequalities, we can characterize the Lee Robinson effective light cone. The strategy is roughly uh, characterized by this, right? We first estimate the speed of boson transport. Then we obtain the uh, upper bound of the moment function after time evolution. Then by using this information, we characterize the uh, boson number distribution after time evolution. Then using this uh, uh, information, we truncate the boson number of the local site. Then using the truncation, we uh, construct some effective Hamiltonian with bounded local energies. Then, using the, this effective Hamiltonian, we derive the Lee Robinson band for this effective Hamiltonian, and this gives the speed of total information propagation. Okay, so from now, I want to show some previous studies uh, the, uh, okay, uh, for the particle transport problem and the total information propagation problem. The first uh, previous study is on the particle transport. As long as I know, this is the first uh, very general study uh, which treats the uh, Bose-Hubbard type Hamiltonians, uh, which is given by Schiff, Harrison, Osborne, I and Isert. Their setup is very simple. They consider uh, initially uh, concentrated bosons, uh, I, mean, I mean the total bosons initially concentrate on some local regions X. Then they consider the time evolution uh, of this uh, completely localized uh, bosons and, uh, and the, uh, how, how the diffusions, uh, and the, they uh, estimate the diffusion speed uh, by the time evolutions. They consider the uh, boson number operator. Uh, this psi x is a quantum state where all the bosons concentrate on the region x, and they consider the time evolutions after the time t, as uh, they consider the, oh, this one, psi x t, okay, okay. And uh, they consider the, uh, the, the probability to, I mean, the, uh, I mean, the expectation value of the boson number after, uh, or at some site j after the time evolution. And they uh, derive the, this kind of Lee Robinson type upper bound. But in their result, uh, they, assume, they assume that all the bosons initially concentrate on some local, uh, in the local site. But uh, this condition is quite strong and uh, no generalization has not be, uh, has been known. So we want to uh, prove uh, this kind of inequality in more realistic conditions. And the first, uh, I mean, the uh, breakthrough was given by Falpin, Lem, and Siegel. Uh, they consider the macroscopic transport problem. Uh, this problem roughly uh, asks uh, uh, the order of total number of bosons. Oh. Order of total number of bosons uh, from region X to the distant region Y. Uh, the, the number of bosons is of order of the total number, but uh, the, it, it can be allowed that there exists uh, bosons outside the region X. So this is a generalization of the uh, 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 and uh, Schiff, Harrison, Isaac, Osborne result. And they consider that the transport of a microscopic number of bosons from region X to region Y should have the finite speed. And uh, on the uh, total information propagation, the Lee Robinson bound in the Bose Hubbard model was first considered by uh, Wang and Hazard. Uh, they considered the uh, Bose Hubbard model instead of the generalized uh, Bose Hubbard type model, but uh, they uh, derived the Lee Robinson uh, light cone, like this form. In this case, the Lee Robinson velocity is proportional to the square root of the total number boson instead of the uh, total number of bosons. So their results qualitatively uh, improve the uh, trivial bound. And, uh, but this is still uh, meaningless because uh, uh, the total number of bosons increases uh, infinitely in thermodynamic, thermodynamic limits. The first result, which is meaningful even for the thermodynamic limits, was given by our papers uh, in PLL 2021. Uh, we consider the steady state 
uh, with low boson density. Steady state means that the state uh, does not change uh, by the time evolutions. And the, this state satisfies some low boson density conditions. For example, the uh, set up as the uh, MOT state. And under these conditions, we prove the Lee Robinson bound like this form. Then uh, from this Lee Robinson bound, uh, it gives uh, a good approximation error uh, for R is larger than T log uh, square of the uh, log T. So from this uh, Lee Robinson bound, we can achieve the almost linear light con up to logarithmic collections. And and very recently, in and Lucas uh, improved our result, uh, yeah, uh, in ve very strong ways. Uh, they consider the same setup, uh, I mean, the steady state with low boson density conditions, and they derive the Lee Robinson bound for average of the commutators. And uh, this Lee Robinson bound is exactly the same as the uh, standard short range deep, uh, interact, I mean, the short range uh, spin system. So. Uh, from this result, uh, as long as we consider the steady state, the, uh, we can achieve the, uh, I mean, the uh, linear light cone uh, for the information propagations. But this uh, average of, of commutator is a bit weaker than the trace norm conditions. But uh, instead, uh, their results can be uh, applied to uh, 1D systems, I mean, the, in the case of 1D systems, the steady state condition can be removed. So in, from their result, uh, if we consider 1D, inter, uh, 1D boson systems uh, with a low boson density condition for arbitrary initial state, uh, the linear light cone uh, of the, I mean, the information propagation is uh, rigorously proved. And I want to note that uh, this kind of the, uh, the difference between the average of the commutator and the uh, trace norm is uh, very important in considering the efficiency guaranteed algorithm for simulating quantum dynamics, for example, using the ha hastings kotal law algorithm. And our new result is given by the, uh, these two uh, operator inequalities. The first uh, one is the speed of boson, uh, boson transport. Uh, we generally uh, derive this kind of operator inequalities. From this operator inequality, uh, we can see that if the, uh, the capital R, I mean the capital R is a distance, distance is uh, much larger than the, uh, the time t, uh, this operator inequality, I mean, the, is almost given by the moment function of the extended region of the, the boson number operators. And in the case of the uh, speed of time, uh, and the speed of total information propagation is given by this form. So the Lee Robinson bound uh, is given by this form. And we, uh, we assume that the initial state satisfies the low boson density conditions. This condition roughly implies the, uh, the probability of the boson number at each side decays sub exponentially. To show the, our result more, uh, in, more, uh, in a simple way, uh, our result is uh, uh, described by this picture. The particle transport has finite speed, but the information pro uh, propagation can be accelerated in high dimensional systems. Uh, from the In and Lucas results, the, I mean the uh, information propagation has finite speed in one d case. So our result is consistent with their result. And uh, the point is, <coughs> uh, we can uh, explicitly construct uh, quantum dynamics which saturates uh, uh, this kind of effective light cone. So, I mean, the, uh, the light cone shape of the t to the power of d is optimal. And the second point is, uh, this kind of acceleration never happens in the case of this uh, spin system of the fer 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 fermion systems. So this characterizes a clear difference between the bosons and the uh, fermionic systems. And as one application, uh, we show, uh, we consider the gate complexity of quantum simulations. The, uh, the gate complexity roughly asks uh, how many, I mean, the uh, elementary quantum gates are sufficient to implement the quantum dynamics. By using the uh, technique of uh, 
a high hasting Cotillo algorithm, we characterize a sufficient number of quantum gates up to some epsilon, uh, up to some uh, era epsilon is given by this form. So n to the power, uh, n, sorry, n times t to the power of d plus one times four log n t over epsilon is sufficient uh, for the, I mean, the efficiency guaranteed, uh, I mean, the simulation of quantum many body, uh, both Hubble uh, models. As long as I know this is the first result uh, to achieve the efficiency guaranteed algorithm for the both Hubble type model. Uh, yeah. <coughs> okay, so I finally show the optimal transfer protocol in bosonic systems. Uh, we want to show by this protocol uh, to show the optimality of the effective light cone uh, we, of the R to, uh, R is proportional to the uh, proportion to T to the power of D. We have already uh, uh, obtained this uh, light cone is uh, given by the upper bound. So we want to show this is also the uh, lower bound. The uh, transfer protocol uh, consists of two steps. The first one is the collection bosons onto the information path. And the step two is the C not operation on this uh, information path. The first uh, step is the collection of the uh, bosons onto the information path. Uh, for simplicity, we consider the uh, two-dimensional systems, and this uh, ladder system is the uh, uh, information path. And the initial state is given by the mod state with only one boson. And uh, we consider boson hopping from the left to right and the right to left. So we have to achieve the boson hopping like this form, and, and usually it takes a time of order one. So by using the half of the time, we can collect the uh, <coughs> nt bar, uh, which is of order uh, t to the power of d minus one bosons uh, concentrate on this information path. And we expect that the, uh, informa I mean the speed of the information transfer uh, proportional to this nt bar so we expect the leap robinson velocity is proportional to t to the power of d minus one. Explicitly, we can uh, achieve this kind of uh, I mean, the information propagation by uh, construct the C not operation of the information path. For this purpose, uh, we encode the qubit uh, like this form. And uh, if the left and right, uh, left and right side has the boson number of nt bar, uh, we encode the state by one state. And if the left side has nt bar minus one bosons, but the right side has uh, nt bar plus one bosons, uh, we uh, encode this state by zero state. So we can achieve the C not operation for j minus one state and the j state like this form. If the j minus one state is given by the zero state and the nt by minus one, and nt bar plus one, then uh, we make no hopping on the j uh, quantum states and the left and right side have no hopping. But if the uh, j minus one state is given by one state, uh, we allow the hopping uh, between the left and right side on the j uh, lines. So by using this uh, uh, protocol, we can achieve the C0 operation. And explicit Hamiltonian is given by this form. The, by labeling the qubit, uh, sorry, the labeling the site by one, two, three, four, and by considering the two body, Hamil, uh, two body interacting, uh, I mean, the uh, both Hubbard type models, this H0 is a free hopping. Then, and uh, this H and U uh, uh, is taken sufficient to large, then, uh, we can achieve the C not type, uh, uh, sorry, C not operations by using one over NT bar time. Uh, so by using the latter half of the time, uh, we can complement in total uh, T, uh, uh, T times the NT bar uh, number of C not operations. And this is order T to the power of D C not operation on the information path. So we can transfer the information up to this uh, up to this distance. So we can achieve the effective light cone like uh, R to R is proportional to t to the power of d. Okay. So the summary of the short-range interacting system is given by this slide. Uh, we have identified the effective light cone for the both Hubble type models, 
and uh, yeah, and this uh, hopping is short range, and uh, this uh, interaction is also short range. And the obtained light cone is uh, given, uh, described by this picture, the particle transport, how finite speed, but the information trans, uh, sorry, uh, information propagation can accelerate for higher dimension systems, and light cone is given by p to the power of b uh, forms. And uh, this is uh, uh, optimal uh, in the sense that the uh, explicit uh, quantum dynamics exists to achieve this light cone. And we also uh, characterize the gate complexity uh, to perform the quantum simulation with an efficient, uh, uh, guaranteed efficient, efficiency epsilon. Okay, so finally, I want to show the, uh, the long-range interacting, uh, I mean, the generalization to long-range interacting systems but, but this is uh, ongoing and uh, we are far from the complete characterization. Okay, thank you. The, uh, we can, uh, I mean, the categorize the long range, uh, both about type models. The first one is, uh, the hopping is short range, but the boson boson interaction is long range. So this one is still short range, but this one is long range. And uh, this kind of, uh, uh, Long range interaction, interacting system is very popular in cold atom setups. And uh, in this case, the problem is much easier than in the case of the long range, in the uh, presence of long range hoppings. In this case, I mean, the, uh, in the case of the short range hopping with long range boson boson interactions, result one on the boson transport still holds even in the presence of long range boson boson interactions. So we can prove that the speed of boson transport is still finite. So we can also uh, control the boson number distribution after the time evolution. So by using this inequality, uh, we combine the uh, two techniques of the unitary connection technique. Oh, okay. <laughs> Unitary connection technique and uh, effective Hamiltonian theory technique, we can also uh, achieve the, uh, I mean, the, uh, derive the Lee Robinson bound with polynomial light cone for alpha is larger than 2D. Uh, if the alpha is smaller than 2D, uh, the, 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 I mean, the situation is the same as the spin system, so we can no longer obtain the, uh, uh, I mean, the polynomial light cone from the famous result by uh, Min Chuan. And, uh, but this uh, if polynomial light cone for alpha larger than 2D is uh, no, uh, far from optimal. For example, if we consider the alpha to infinity, then the light cone shape is given by uh, R is proportional to T to the power of 2D plus one instead of a, uh, T to the power of P. So this Lee Robinson bound uh, cannot reach to the short range interaction, I mean, the, cannot reach to the Lee Robinson bound for short range interacting systems, even in the limit of alpha to infinity. So this is uh, not optimal. And the second uh, case is the long range hopping and long range interaction. So we allow the long range hopping uh, between bosons. This is kind of a model that is a bit uh, unusual in experimental setup, but we can also consider uh, this kind of models in mathematical levels. And in this case, the very uh, bad point is that the result one no longer holds and we have to uh, modify this uh, operator inequality. So we cannot use this operator inequality. We, we don't know the boson number distribution after the time evolutions. <coughs> so the problem is much more difficult. On the macroscopic pa uh, particle transport, uh, we can uh, prove that the light cone shape is given by T to the power of one over max one alpha minus B. So if alpha is larger than D plus one, the macroscopic particle transport have still finite velocities. But if the alpha is smaller than D plus one, the macroscopic particle transport can be accelerated. Macroscopic trans, uh, particle transport implies that the uh, order of the total number of bosons uh, transport from the region X to the distant region Y. So from this uh, macroscopic particle transport result, uh, we cannot know and uh, upper bound the boson number distribution at local site. 
and very decently, uh, I mean, the uh, result on the microscopic particle transport, which generalize our result one, has been obtained by Lem and Ruby, Liani, and Jiang, uh, which is uh, satisfied for alpha is larger than 2D plus 1. So from their results, I expect that the uh, uh, polynomial light cone can be derived uh, in, for this uh, parameter regimes. Okay, so I finally show several open problems uh, regarding the deep Robinson band in bosonic systems. Oh, that's okay. The, the first point is to prove better light cones in other natural setups, like uh, in the uh, translation invariance. In our uh, studies, the acceleration of the boson, I mean the, uh, I mean the information propagation uh, comes from the concentration of the boson to, uh, I, mean the, uh, I mean the particular regions. But this kind of uh, concentration should be prohibited in translation invariance systems. So we expect that under the translation invariance, we will be able to prove the linear light cone in general. But the problem is very difficult uh, in mathematically uh, proves uh, uh, generic translation invariance system. Uh, now uh, we have several results, but, in prep, uh, but not uh, completed yet. The second problem is to numerically or experimentally uh, demonstrating this uh, uh, acceleration of information propagations. Uh, we consider several natural I mean, the models uh, which may achieve the, uh, I mean, the uh, acceleration of the information propagation, but uh, at this stage, we, uh, the, yeah, uh, the study is not go well even numerically. So the point is how to construct a good model uh, to, I mean, the, to achieve the boson concentration and the uh, accelerating information propagation. And the third problem is more important, integrating the bosons and long-range interacting systems. So this, uh, I mean, the the breakdown of the two basic conditions, the finite energy and the short, re short, eh? short rangeness of the inter interactions. Maybe the, this is the final goal of the Lee Robinson band study, and uh, we have partial success, but far from complete characterizations. The studies of the integrating the bosons and long range interactions has uh, just started, and uh, we don't know, uh, we don't know, even know uh, what is the possible candidate for the optimum form of the light cone. So uh, I hope uh, this kind of studies will advance in the future studies. That's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Okay, are there questions? Thank you, very impressive results. Uh, I think my question may be very naive. So suppose the initial state is the ground state, mm -hmm. or near the ground state. Now let me compare bosonic systems and the spin systems. Mm -hmm. The low energy physics may be described by the same effective field theory. Then shouldn't I expect the information propagation have qualitatively the same behavior oh, for bosonic uh, systems and spin systems? In the system? case of the ground state, uh, we can utilize the, uh, oh sorry. Uh, We can utilize the result by Ian Lucas, uh, there, and or our result, uh, the steady state, because the ground state is steady state. So any perturbation to the uh, ground state uh, propagate uh, linearly with time. So in this case, uh, if we consider the ground state with uh, low boson density conditions, the situation is the same as the uh, spin systems. I see there's no acceleration for information propagation. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, as long as uh, bosons concentrate initially on the ground state. Uh -huh. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Yes, thanks for the interesting presentation. Uh, two questions. It seems that the interactions within the bosons plays a very relevant role in, in the, in the speed limit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you comment on that? On, on... Okay, uh, the point of the boson, I mean, boson interaction is quite important, for example, to achieve the uh, boson concentration. 
this kind of boson hopping, this uh, boson hopping is uh, anti-symmetric. So in order to achieve this uh, boson hopping, we have to uh, assume, the, and have, we have to assume the existence of the boson-boson interactions. In the case of free boson case, we can never uh, from this state to this state. And another question, do you understand why, for example, in two dimension, the speed limit is larger than, or the, this is quadratic instead of linear? Do you understand, have I some intuition of why this happened in, in a two dimensional system? The point is that the uh, speed of the bosons uh, proportional to the number of bosons on the local site. So if we consider the, uh, the one dimensional systems uh, with the average number of bosons uh, is, for example, like a capital Q, then the, uh, the Lee Robinson bound is proportional to the capital Q, e e even in the one dimensional system. So if we increase the capital Q, I mean, the one site bosons uh, uh, infinitely, then the Lee Robinson bound also uh, uh, increases infinitely. So uh, we want to uh, I mean, the, realize this kind of the, I mean, the uh, boson, I mean, the, uh, the increasing of the boson number on local site uh, dynamically. Uh, and this only possible in high dimensional systems. Because uh, in one dimensional systems, uh, bosons uh, locally I mean, the concentrate, but the, some region have many bosons, but some region have small bosons. So we cannot con uh, I mean, construct the one-dimensional uh, information path in the case of 1D systems. But in the case of 2D systems, we can I mean, the construct uh, this kind of information path with the boson number uh, increases with time. So this is a, a very I mean, the naive I mean, the intuition why the uh, acceleration occurs in high-dimensional bosonic systems. Yeah. Um, so, how is it possible that the the particle transport is slower than the information? Like, like the, the how can the information arrive sooner than the particle? Oh, you mean? Uh, that's what I'm understanding correctly. Like, uh, like this. It looks like the the information would arrive before the the particle. How does that happen? Oh, why particle? Oh, mm, in. But yeah, it is not easy to explain why particle transport has uh, cannot be accelerated. In yeah, in fact, uh, I first uh, consider the uh, possibility of the uh, acceleration of particle transport, but but uh, hmm. Mm, sorry, uh, it's something that's going to ask you. Don't, don't, don't speak. <laughs> no, I was just curious, like, is it related maybe to, like, number fluctuations to propagate differently than, like, phase fluctuations? And, like, those two things have different phase velocity? I don't know. I, I'm just wondering. And I think the, in, the, the information propagation also goes through the interaction, right? Okay, unless there are really super urgent questions still, you? Oh, I was just going to make a brief comment. Okay, let's have a brief comment. Okay, I mean, maybe you can correct me that this is wrong, but my understanding for the discrepancy in higher dimensions is roughly that, okay, if, if he goes back to the slide where kind of all the particles push, are, get pushed onto the information path, Sorry? then Maybe, yeah, so one cartoon is now imagine there's like one extra particle on the information path, mm -hmm. and in the Bose-Hubbard model in the Mott insulating phase, the velocity of a single excitation on top of the ground state is, is n, the density. And so now you have density t to the d minus one, mm -hmm. and so that's why you get this enhancement. So you mean, oh, uh, sorry, uh, what is the question I mean the, so you mean the I mean the I mean the particle transport can be accelerated from this uh, I'm saying that 
for just one particle on top of this state, it would, one particle could move quickly, but you wouldn't be able to move like a whole chunk of particles. So this. Oh, I see, yeah. I, oh, I also thought this kind of transport, but uh, yeah, the, the difficult problem is how to uh, define the particle transport. Because the uh, bosons is uh, indistinguishable particles. So we cannot uh, uh, say that if the uh, one boson, uh, I mean, if the initially one boson uh, is larger than, I mean, the, uh, most states uh, which have uh, one extra boson on one side and uh, after time t, this uh, one boson, uh, I mean, the, and the move to the, and the, the end, uh, and the, the other side with very fast speed. But we, if we, I mean, sorry. Mm. Okay, so could you uh, discuss afterwards? Okay, it's sure. very difficult uh, uh, to explain. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Um, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you very much. <laughs>